This is your Nipah Town Council debrief for the October the 3rd, 2023 meeting. The debrief will highlight key issues being discussed by Council and provide additional information where we're able. This week we jump right into Council reports with Deputy Mayor Parrott updating Council on the new LPN Training Centre. Construction is running on schedule and the renovate facility will be open in about six weeks. He also commends the organizers of last week's Indigenous Culture Day, which was briefly visited by then Premier Heather Stephenson. The event was identified by the Indigenous elder who hosted the powwow. It's one of the very few of its kind in the Westman area. Councillor Nadeau reports that the Yellowhead Board is once again looking for a new director. As they are ramping up for the winter months, they hope the position will be filled very soon. As well, he indicates that the upcoming LPN program is not at capacity yet and they will be having a come and go information session on October 11th at the library. Councillor Kosinchuk also thanked the community for their support of HAND, which received nearly $2,000 from a supper put on by the Legion Ladies Auxiliary. I had the privilege of greeting 10 newcomers to town on Friday the 23rd. And it was pretty awesome with the exchange there. So they've had a great welcome to Nipua. Um, I'd like to thank Vince Walker for his many, many years of service looking after the um, beautiful Plains Community Medical Clinic. He's decided to retire from that at the end of October. So we'll be looking for somebody who's just as fantastic as he was. And after touring the training center yesterday and today with the architect, uh, it's well on schedule. It's a remarkable uh, facelift and change to the building uh, with the addition and all. So we're looking forward to its opening in about six weeks. So <clears throat> I should uh, also like to thank all the work that uh, Councillor Sisley started when she was at Arts Forward for the Indigenous uh, celebration in the powwow was held on Friday. It went over very smoothly. There were over 300 people there, or 1,300 people there, um, and even from as far away as Balder, Manitoba. And uh, Darren, the uh, elder that was there, made reference, I think it was Darren Rousseau, made reference to the fact that we were the only rural community outside of Winnipeg celebrating. Uh, it was pretty cool. And our, uh, of course, our local school uh, kids were high in attendance there as well. It was very well run. And it was a great day. Gave the tobacco away twice. Right. She mentioned our guest. Our quick guest for what play is? Oh! <laughs> Yes, we had a guest. Uh, Superintendent Jason Young came down. <laughs> Wrong guest. And uh, <laughs> Premier Heather Stephenson came down, and uh, MLA candidate um, Jody Byram was there, as well as some uh, RCMP. And I, out of that, I got myself a really cool medallion from that unit. It's a nice gesture. And uh, Premier Stephenson was able to walk around the whole area during the activities part and speak with uh, all the elders that were present there and all the presenters. And it was a very nice, pleasant surprise. Councilor Nodo? Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, on September 18th, we had a Yellowhead board meeting. Uh, we, we began doing more planning for the season with the Yellowhead reopening fully uh, with hockey season and figure skating season and all those seasons starting and uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, at seeing a, a new director start soon hopefully. Uh, the hiring is going on hopefully this week we're hoping and uh, lots going on at the Yellowhead. On September 20th uh, there was a Westlake Employment Skills and Services Center meeting that we had. And a couple of things to highlight for council here is uh, our LPN program is not full. The program's not full yet. Uh, so there's still some room if people are interested. That's what I'm hearing. 
And on October 11th, of course, there's an LPN uh, community leader type meeting, I believe. It's at the, the library. There's going to be, it's a come and go. So between 6 and 8 p.m., you can come to the library and come and go to get more information about, uh, about LPN courses and stuff. Uh, also, on September 20th, there was a, a, a Westman, uh, sorry, a WMRLA uh, library board meeting. It was held in Carberry and got to tour the Carberry facility at the same time. And it's a very beautiful library. And our, our ratepayers here have access, full access to all the libraries within the region, which is nice. So your library court card could allow you to get some, a lot of, uh, a lot of good materials there also. Uh, and the last one I'd like to bring council up, up on is uh, on September 21st, we have an Equal Library Advisory Committee. And uh, a couple of highlights to share with council is there's some new, we purchased some new children's furniture. So we've got all new children's furniture in the children's area of the library. It's worth taking a look at. Uh, really easy to, easier to maintain and it looks beautiful. And it's gonna be very purposeful for our patrons that come in to use it. We get a lot of children using the library. And we also uh, finished revising and updating our meeting room policy. And it's available for anyone that would like to take a look at it. Uh, you just go to the library desk and you can have a copy of it if you're interested. So we, we've updated that so it's current now. And those are the items I wanted to share. On September 26th, I met with the hand um, committee, the board. Um, they're doing quite well. They, the Legion uh, Auxiliary, Legion Ladies Auxiliary, uh, they put on a, a meal and the hand um, was given $1,943.72 in the fundraiser, so that was really good. Um, they're having a fall tea on October the 5th, coming up. Um, we've discussed getting some new equipment for the kitchen over at the, uh, just to sort of give a little bit more opportunity to do other things. They're looking at getting a deep fryer, so they're going to look into whether or not they can just purchase a, a you know, just on a counter one. Or if you go through the fire, fire, fire. Then, then there's a huge remodel to do. So they're going to look at which one that they can get, preferably a cheaper way. Um, we have a meeting, our next meeting is on the 8th. December and August was really good. There was 265 takeouts, 99 deliveries. They sold 365 tickets for the meal service. So they're doing really well. The, they did raise the price up to $11, and there's no backlash from that. They're, they're doing it well. So. Yeah. Councillor Gerard introduces the Housing Accelerator Fund which is a program from the federal government to support the development of housing and housing related infrastructure. The town has submitted an application to the program, which required them to have a housing study prepared over the past six months and are waiting to hear if they are deemed eligible. If the town receives funding, it could be as much as $4.9 million. Because all funds are to be paid out by the end of 2025, the window for accessing this program is not large, but it could mean a great deal of support for community growth. Yes, September 26, the uh, Governance and Finance Committee had a meeting on, in the office, and we were discussing part of a, a larger program that is starting to roll out across Canada. Um, back in the 2022 budget, there was $84 billion dollars committed to a national housing strategy across Canada. And part of that, there's a 20, further 20 billion uh, set aside for what was developed as a housing accelerator fund. Those are dollars that are going to be distributed to municipalities across Canada to increase the number of housing goods built and facilitate municipalities developing communities and community growth within their community. And through that, they're looking at it through the specter of some single family housing, affordable housing, multifamily housing, as well as apartment buildings. Acknowledging that there is a shortage of housing, which is having a direct impact on the cost of housing for individuals. So, Mequa Council, uh, actually about six months ago, 
became aware of this program and we started the process to do a housing study because actually applying for the uh, the, the national the, pardon, the housing accelerator fund you did have to have a housing study in place now there's a very tight window uh, as this program gets rolled out they're already actually starting to make announcements on funding and they're looking to have all those funding dollars paid out somewhere by the end of 2025 so we're looking at about a three-year window so it's it's gonna it's communities like Nipawa that have taken uh, lead on this by doing the housing study to recognize where our shortcomings are, what we need to do to develop and facilitate growth within our community. Uh, that includes whether it be traditional single family housing, which um, keeps me looking the way it is, but it's also getting us to sit down and look at how we walk balls going forward in our neighborhoods. So we're starting to have some preliminary uh, conversations. Now, how this fund will work is those dollars will go to facilitate infrastructure. And infrastructure has always been a major uh, barrier to development, especially with private developers and even, even for communities like ourselves because of the massive amounts of dollars that are required to put water, sewer, roads in place. When we start taking a look at single family housing, when single family housing is rolled out, often the payback, and when I say the payback, that is the cost recapture of rolling out infrastructure, we can be in excess of 25 years to recapture those tax dollars off of a house just to recapture the infrastructure that gets rolled out. So when we see new tax dollars coming from a house, it does not necessarily mean it solves those infrastructure problems going forward. So the group is starting to have initial meetings and we could see a funding announcement anytime, October, November, to see if we walk qualifies. In an ideal world with what we'd like to see it on the, on the upper end, we could see on the upper end of you know, $4.9 million, but what are the real challenges of that for us as a community is that that is paid for infrastructure, but is paid on building permits. So it's a very fast turnaround. So there's going to be a lot coming forward from the community uh, in the short term when we start looking at how we're going to work towards the housing accelerator fund. And we're, I think we're well positioned with how Nipua has been growing and we can show that our growth as a community has been exponential to other communities of like size. Uh, we've shown that we've planned in advance by developing these studies. Those studies have not only engaged the municipality, we have reached out and they have surveyed developers, they have surveyed other groups within the community is what we're needing. And uh, I think it's gonna be a real exciting time, but it's gonna require the community to come together really fast as how we evolve new neighborhoods uh, how will we see Nipawa change to meet this new challenge, whether, it, like I said, the housing looks different, we see more multifamily housing. Uh, but I think, you know, even for those who might be interested in doing developments in the community, the window will be very short, but there's going to be opportunities to have infrastructure, those infrastructure dollars matched to help get that growth going. So, exciting time but it's a lot to get our heads wrapped around in a very short term as well. If we get approved. If we get approved, which I'm confident in our administrative team, <laughs> we're, we're, we're on our way. Okay, let's move forward. Thank you, Councillor Gerard. That is very exciting. Let's, let's keep our fingers crossed on that. Council will also be applying to the Manitoba Economic Development Infrastructure Program for funding to help build new road infrastructure east of town. Specifically, this would be an east-west road off PTH 16 used to access the new hospital. Um, so the Municipal Economic Development and Infrastructure Program is a program that has an application deadline of October 6th. And uh, this is run through the Economic Development Office with the idea to target uh, economic development in communities that would advance your community uh, in areas 
that would be specific to you creating those development activities, whether it be commercial or otherwise, or, or housing. So we're asking, though, our application, which qualifies under the program, we're asking uh, for funding and support to help build the, the road infrastructure in the north or in the southwest 34, 14, 15, and more specifically uh, for the first development project. Should there be any in the future out there, this one key to be the to create a road that will run east-west through there. And of course, the uh, the road that will provide access from PD 16 for the new hospital. So our application is going to be for the road infrastructure on the southwest of 34, specifically at this point in time for the hospital. And I need a resolution to send with our application. Questions? Be it resolved that the town, <laughs> that the council of town and equal support an application to, to the Manitoba Economic Development Infrastructure Program for the development and construction of those portions of the public road within Southwest 34, 14, 15 to provide access to the new regional hospital and future development projects. Move by. Councilor Kostachuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Parrott. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Manager of Operations, Denise Sakay, updates Council on the progress of several ongoing projects including winterizing some of our water infrastructure, and makes particular mention of the fish upstream relocation that will be necessary as they proceed with the Park Lake build, which is an important act of fisheries as they begin to bypass the river. He also notes that motorized vehicles, including dirt bikes and ATVs, are not permitted at the bike park and can cause serious and costly damage to the trails. Um, so everything's coming in long stuff. Park Lake project is still underway. Residents gave notice that uh, there's more and more progress as everyone keeps looking at the right by. Uh, so, work is still said to be completed this fall uh, with the embankment first and then the concrete works following that. Uh, bypass pumping will start soon because the contractor is starting to fill the breach location and start construction of the dam in that location. So, it'll be bypass pumping by the uh, better part of the month. So, they have to do some fish rescue and some fish uh, relocation as part of the fisheries and oceans aspect of this project, so that'll be on the way. The good project, they said, still kind of slowed down just due to waiting on uh, some mechanical features for construction. Uh, as Councillor Perry mentioned, the training facility building is moving along nicely. Some of our other work around is still ongoing, so paving still ongoing. A few patches will try to get them to add in there. Uh, residents are also still participating in the yard waste pickup program. We've uh, initiated that. Um, and then also, yeah, kind of getting seasonal touches in our water infrastructure. So hybrids are being pumped out and treated for winter and starting to look at decommissioning some of our facilities and putting it to seasonal storage now. So we'll see some of our uh, water lines being blown out soon as well. Uh, we did manage to get the rural raw line, uh, water plant staff had that line flushed out uh, last weekend, so that was good to see. There's no issues there, so staff worked on Sunday to see that. Uh, we participated under the rec side. Uh, we completed the first fall fever race at the Highlight Back 40. We had approximately 35 participants in that race. Um, we kept it at U16 level, so no one above that age. And everything went off really well. Weather held off, we didn't get any rain, and uh, the participation of the tennis record is wherever we want to see it, so we're very pleased. Um, water bikes? Pardon? Dirt bikes? Yes, we still are having issues with off road vehicles going in there. So we have quads and we have some dirt bikes still in that site. Uh, again, this is a bicycle or walking or hiking, running facility only. There's be no motorized vehicles whatsoever in there. None of the features were designed, nor can they handle every machinery. You're just going to ruin the site. You can't handle the, uh, the aggressive tread, also the motor spinning, the tires, so it's, it, you're just going to ruin the site. If you're in there. And in Crotton, there will be a, a chapter of safety. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Just uh, so you're saying for the month that we bypass the, the river at Park Lake, uh, we have to rescue all the fish and just move they them will, over. They will, whenever in the portion, I think the downstream, they have to relocate those fish. So they'll oh, catch them and move them, move them over. Yeah, we'll 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 actually, believe it or not, uh, Stony Creek and former counselor Stillwell, who's here. Stony Creek is one of the few fisheries in southwestern Manitoba that actually host brook trout. Okay. They are large, but they have been caught uh, by the Burton residents this summer. Not large, but they exist, and that is part of a fishery. So it is not, as much as people want to roll their eyes to the idea, it is an actually an active fishery. And yeah, that's why in the summer when it rolls back around, when we get a lake again, we use some pelicans in that lake because those are there. So it, it seems like an out at expense and all that, but it is a necessary step. No, it just seems so interesting how, yeah. we, how we do that to accommodate our wildlife. So that's great. Finally, we have a couple of items of particular note for public action. First of all, the Nipua Area Health Auxiliary is looking for support from businesses and private donors to help them enhance the health care services in our area, including at the new hospital, which is slated to open in 2025. As well, CATS TNR and Rescue has recently lost their operating and care facility and are looking for a new home. Council mentions the great social and economic service they do for the town and encourage anyone who is able to help to step forward. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to bring up um, an issue going on in the community that just came up as it showed up as last week. Um, and that's to do with the TNR cat rescue people. They are about to become homeless uh, as far as the facility for, for housing their rescues and, and that and adopting out animals. Now, you know, the one thing I, I look at as a, as a community, this is a great service to the community. On average, when the town has a cat get picked up and then get euthanized, it's in excess of $200 per animal. So it's in our best interest that we see TNR cat rescue go forward. So for those of you who are out there and may have a building or something along those lines that they could uh, host those cats, I, I hope the community can get behind this group and get them going. Uh, like I said, obviously it's great from the perspective of animal care and, and that, but also even for the, the town of Deepwa, it makes great fiscal sense that this group continues to operate. So hopefully we can find a solution for them. In the coming weeks. Not very right. Okay, any other questions? Mayor? <coughs> um, just to plug in for the Nipwa Health Auxiliary Group, uh, they are actively fundraising. Um, I'll probably have a letter to read for you next week. I left in the office, but if you know Yvonne Ferguson, she is one of the contacts. And uh, it'd be a great time to start making donations as they're going to be putting it to a good use. Uh, we're having a wonderful hospital being built. And that's it. Good. Just add into that, Councilor Parrott. Anyone can make a donation to the town of Nipawa <laughs> if they are looking for ways they can contribute to the new hospital um, and what we can do towards the development uh, contribution to the town at the town office, you can be issued a tax receipt as well for any contributions that could go forward to that new facility that is quickly taking shape out to the east of town. Also covered were the regular financial reports, the upcoming November 2nd tax sale, and two applications to the Development Incentive Program. You can view end-to-end -end coverage of the Town Council meeting elsewhere in the NACTV schedule, including immediately following this. If you have comments, questions, or topics that we might be able to shed some light on, please reach out at 204-476-2639 or by email at nactvnews at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>